I think we did it. Oh, fancy transition this time. I know. Hello, Ethan. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hi, hi. This is very exciting. It's our first Career Circle live event of 2022. And some things never change, apparently. One second. <laughs> This is not the first time that Ethan's fire alarm has gone off uh, during a live stream, so no worries. Uh, we'll give a chance for everybody to kind of tune in, settle in, get comfortable. Um, if things look a little bit different today, um, at least they do to Ethan and I, um, it's because we're using a new streaming platform. So today you're seeing us not only on Facebook, but also on LinkedIn, YouTube, and even Twitter. Lots of cool changes this year. Sorry about that. I'll, like I said, <laughs> some things never change. It's always something. It was an honorary start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, as we're giving everyone uh, a moment to log in, um, feel free as Ethan and I are talking to put in questions in chat. Um, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions while we're talking, feel free to send a message. We're more than happy to jump in and help. But for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, my name is Amanda Duarte. I'm the operations manager here at Career Circle. Career Circle is a digital upskilling platform that is here to help serve our members with whatever they might need. So whether that's connecting them with different training opportunities, helping them get set up with interview preparation, resume building, and then helping with our recruitment team to connect them with employers to look for that perfect opportunity. And I'm joined today by Ethan Parker. I'll give him a chance to introduce himself. Hi there, uh, name's Ethan. I'm the digital recruitment manager with Career Circle. Essentially, I work directly with uh, folks like yourself to kind of help uh, map out your career, figure out what you're looking for, and then kind of partner you with the right resource for you, whether that be upskilling to align with that career goal or help you to find a position as soon as possible. And today, that is what we're here to talk about. So we're here to talk about all things upskilling. Um, for those that are just logging in, um, I was just saying that as you think of questions, tips, um, you want to share your experience, please just feel free to leave it down in the chat below. Um, and Ethan and I can also help to answer any questions. So before we really dive into the conversation, I thought we'd start with defining what upskilling is, because until I joined Career Circle, it was a term that I'd never heard before. So Ethan, explain it to me and audience members who might also not have heard of it before. Sure. Yeah. So upskilling is essentially uh, an alternate form of continued education from call. I mean, it also does cover, you know, higher education like college, but basically any higher education that you pursue in alignment with your career goals, whether that be IT support, data analytics, business management, um, really anything that you do to enhance your tool sets to kind of uh, aid you professionally in your career. And definitely very important nowadays um, with technology changing every single day and new softwares and new skills coming out, hiring managers and employers are definitely looking for employees and staff that are going to be knowledgeable about these new skills and new softwares that are coming out. Um, are you noticing any specific trends um, with the skill sets that you work for, for specific skills or maybe specific softwares that people are looking to have experience with? Um, the majority of skills that I see as super relevant currently, obviously, IT support's always growing. Um, people, as technology grows in the workforce, people need people who can kind of uh, support that technology on the fly and uh, make any repairs, fixes, or implement any new systems as necessary. That said, uh, software development's always growing, of course. Uh, we're always looking for ways to enhance the workforce with whether that be new system software development or, as I said earlier, implementing currently existing technologies to enhance a better business flow. Behind the scenes as well, there's uh, lots of trends in project management. We see a lot of folks right now, right now the largest gap in the project management space is trying to get folks to over that hump of senior. So we find right now that there's a lot of kind of apprenticeship opportunities or coordinator opportunities that allow for folks to kind of get their foot in the door, get exposure to that um, and kind of gain a little bit of uh, on the job experience, so to speak, before they get into that space. So that's kind of some of the trends that we see in the, the workforce currently. 
Very true. And if anyone out there identifies with any of those industries or that skill set, definitely a valuable one to have nowadays. But if you are sort of new to the space of maybe software development or IT support or tech, um, a great way to sort of get some of those introductory skill sets is to be upskilling. So looking for different types of certifications, trainings, boot camps that can help give you those skills um, before you actually enter, um, you know, an entry level job or enter a job in that space. Um, there's quite a few different certification options um, that I've seen before. Um, I've seen a lot, um, of course, with Career Circle, we've seen a lot of Salesforce um, certifications, a lot of Google professional certificates. Um, help me list a few extra even. Yeah, absolutely. So outside of uh, the Salesforce and Google certificates, there's also uh, certificates in the same space for that IT support, data analytics, software development space. Your big providers are going to be Microsoft, AWS, or that's short for Amazon Web Services, uh, the PMP certification, the CompTIA certification, uh, that's primarily in like your IT support network admin space. That, that again, that kind of transitions back to that um, technical support kind of skill sets. Uh, but beyond that, those are kind of your main providers. You can also pursue any kind of like software development boot camps that you would see on like a, a Udemy or uh, other digital platforms like that. Very true. And each of these different types of courses are also going to differ depending on what industry you're in. So if you're looking for what sorts of upskilling might be right for you, a good place to start might also be asking some industry experts or people that work in the industry you're looking to get into. Because um, when I think of something even like human resources, um, there's the Society for Human Resource Management. So SHRM, that's quite a popular certificate within that space. Um, project management, of course, you're going to have like the PMP, the professional project management um, certificates from the PMI institution. So if you're ever not sure, a great place to look is either to consult with industry experts or even looking at job postings to figure out what sorts of qualifications that they're looking for. If you're seeing a lot of requirements for maybe a PMP certificate, or if you're seeing PMI, then that's always a good sign that that would be a useful certificate to have as well. Yeah, absolutely. And as you see those relevant certifications, if it's positions that you're interested in pursuing, highly recommend, obviously, uh, doing a little bit of research on your own, figuring out if it's something that aligns with your career goals. And then beyond that, kind of um, figuring out what the curriculum traditionally will entail as well. For sure. And sometimes upskilling is the solution for how to get experience without having experience. It's always the catch-22 of applying for those sorts of jobs. So even if you can't find an entry-level role within maybe software development, you might then start out with training. So doing upskilling, doing these types of courses to then just get some experience with the software they're looking for. So you can already add it to your resume without actually having had a job within that space as well. Yep. Uh, I, lots and lots of success stories come from software engineers who kind of got their start in boot camp, uh, just learned the core technologies and then went on from there. Uh, so I encourage folks definitely look into any upskilling avenues you have. Don't let your, your lack of knowledge per a career field uh, be the barrier because there's so many resources online now that kind of will help you to get where you want to be. For sure. And when you're choosing the best sort of upskilling, um, definitely don't be hard on yourself at the beginning for not already having these skills or not already having experience with this. That is what these types of upskilling opportunities are for. It's to introduce these new careers and new industry trends. So a lot of you know, taking the step forward into upskilling starts with giving yourself the grace of being able to learn something new, because that is also a wonderful skill to have, being mm -hmm. open to different training opportunities and showing that you're competent enough to learn a new skill and that you're willing to open yourself up to new opportunities is also a great soft skill to have too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I myself actually fun little piece of background about me. So I have a background in computer science. I, uh, you know, learned a little bit about IT support, kind of took the traditional tech support route, and then got into recruiting. And then as time went on, I found passion behind the computer science piece. But I also found that learning more about the field would help me to be able to better serve folks who are looking um, to kind of pursue new opportunities in that space. So I, I'm actively pursuing actually currently an associates in computer science. And um, I, I use those skills actively every day to help folks who are kind of in the same space get a position that may better leverage themselves. So all this to say, like, you don't all even necessarily have to think of upskilling as like this unilateral thing where it's like a point A to point B. 
the skills that you learn from upskilling can apply to a wide variety of career fields. Um, so just kind of think of it as a loose form thing and think of it as tools to enhance your professional uh, skill set. Yeah. And time spent learning is never wasted. So even if, um, you know, the certificate that you're pursuing ends up, you know, not being the traditional career path that you might have thought of, those types of soft skills are always going to be useful for you to have. So um, especially in Ethan gave the perfect example. So recruiting and computer science, two things that maybe for some people might not be a traditional model, but for what you do is absolutely perfect. Yep. It works great for me. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I should hope so. <laughs> all right. And um, for those of you um, who are brand new to um, the upskilling um, and are maybe actively pursuing a certificate, definitely want to encourage all of you to just keep pushing forward and keep learning those new sorts of skills. Um, it's always great to be intentional when you're pursuing these types of trainings to know what it is that you want or what your long-term goal might be to then help sort of shape what it is that you're learning. So that way, as you're picking up these new skills, you can also think of the applications that they might have maybe further down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and thinking around that piece of like being intentional as well, when you pursue upskilling, you'll kind of want to take a, a, a broad scope view of, okay, well, here's my current workload. What can I allocate to this upskilling part of my life? And what do I need to do to make that work essentially? So actively, you know, catalog your work-life balance, et cetera, and think of when you'll be able to do, pursue your upskilling and choose a program that kind of aligns with that. You, you don't want to set yourself up for, not, not that again, to Amanda's points, you know, time spent learning is never wasted, but, um, you, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you won't be able to complete the curriculum. No, it's very fair. And that's a lot of people that are interested in upskilling sometimes are debating between, do I want to do a training program or do I want to go more with a type of university program, so like an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree? They're both great learning paths and very similar opportunities to be able to pursue training. Um, I just, for everyone, just based on your work-life balance, it might not balance out to do both at the same time. <laughs> uh, may definitely take care of your um, you know, your personal energy as well, uh, making sure that whatever you decide to pursue, whether it is that training boot camp or it is, um, you know, a few college classes on the side that you're just not taking on too much so that you can focus and at least be successful in one of those paths, like you've been saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's important to know, like, set realistic goals for yourself. Don't go whole hog at it and don't put yourself in a position where it's like you, you're unable to fulfill your obligations on either side. You, you want to actively, like I said, catalog what you need and what you can do and be realistic with the goals that you set for yourself. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. Like <laughs> definitely, Absolutely. you know, it's better to do a little bit of training every single day or do, you know, a little bit of learning on Udemy or on Coursera or uh, LinkedIn learning, you know, a little bit every day rather than signing up for like a five hour boot camp every single day. That's just going to, you know, kind of knock you out. So um, any sort of training that you can do um, really helps to, again, push you towards your long-term goal, but also make sure that you're preserving your energy and preserving your intentions. Mm -hmm. And in and, and the spirit of like, you know, slow and steady when serious and just learning more about the upskilling piece of it, as you encounter upskilling curriculums that you are interested in, feel free to take a look at the overview. And then just, I, I encourage everyone to do a little bit of research, take some time to familiarize yourself with the core technologies that are used there. You can look at any kind of YouTube videos, any kind of online resources that you could just find on Google um, to kind of teach you a little bit more about what the core technologies are, how they're used, and that'll kind of help you to grasp the, the, the scope of the curriculum a little bit better going in. Yeah. So we've kind of touched on a few, you know, a few different areas when you're considering upskilling, but thank you, Ethan, for bringing us back to the, to the beginning of it. So before even, you know, enrolling yourself in a boot camp or in a certificate training, um, you know, spending time to make sure that whatever you're pursuing is something that's going to be valuable towards your long-term career goal or towards something that you're interested in, um, just to make sure that it will align with where you're looking to get. And it's something that you see value in as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's not something that you, you could see yourself like actively interested in and wanting to pursue routinely, then it's probably not the right curriculum for you. 
It's fair. And some of us uh, kind of stumble onto our career paths too. Um, I have found that for a lot of people that are pursuing um, now project management training, whether with a PMP or the Google project management certificate, that a lot of people that end up pursuing those are people that describe themselves as like a jack of all trades, or I like doing everything. I can't pick just one career path. Um, end up becoming project managers or operations managers. I know I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. um, so for some, you kind of stumble into what your passion is and then you start to do a little bit of extra learning. And the same can apply for technology too. Um, you know, raising your hand to ask questions in your current role or with your current company. Um, if you start taking an interest in another department and you're interested in what they do, sometimes that's always a good kind of notion on the back of your head that maybe you might want to learn a little bit more about them and pursue some training to maybe consider that as a career change. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a great catch as well. Uh, taking time to speak with people who you may know that are already in the field that you would like to pursue just to get a general ballpark of what, what a day to day looks like in the role for them. Um, and give you that a little more, again, comfortability and pursuing that as like, okay, I definitely want to do this is a, is a great idea. Um, Amanda, question for you, as far as uh, upskilling goes and the process of pursuing that, what are some uh, ideal resources for people to pursue? Because I know, obviously, on Career Circle, we, we, we work a lot with the Google and Salesforce certifications. Uh, what's that process traditionally look like as far as um, people trying to pursue that? Yeah, I definitely talk to a lot of members who are interested specifically in those two certificates. Um, so a lot of times it starts with first, um, like we were saying before, starting with your goals, skills, and interests to figure out which certificate's going to best align with you. And then as you're doing additional research, seeing what other options are available out there. Um, the Career Circle website on our courses page, we do have a lot of information about some of the different certificates available. If you're considering ones on other platforms, you can also check out like Coursera or Udemy to see course catalog descriptions for the different certificate options that are out there. And the number one tip that um, I hinted at before that I share with everyone is please go visit a job board and pull up a job description for what you're considering. Um, if it's project management, look up a project coordinator role in your area. If it's going to be something tech related, look up IT help desk, um, see what sorts of skills or qualifications they're looking for, and then make sure that it aligns with the course curriculum that you're considering. And then provided that it does, also take a look at what the job's responsibilities are to see if it's something that you could picture yourself doing in a nine to five or in your daily life to see if it's something that you're interested in. And as long as you can check off those two check boxes, it's usually a good sign that you're found the right upskilling path for you. Yeah, great. Um, okay, I, I'd love to open the floor to the audience, see if there's anyone who has any questions or if people could sound off with some of the certifications that they're pursuing currently and uh, what their experience has been. I'd love to highlight some uh, folks who have <clears throat> you know, things to share about their curriculum. For sure. And don't worry about, you know, limiting it to the certifications that we mentioned. If there are other certificates that you have out there, we'd love to hear them on um, sort of what your journey has been like, uh, maybe how you originally got connected with that upskilling opportunity and uh, what you might be considering doing with that certificate. Yeah. I will say uh, things that I see on the recruiting side a lot. I, I've seen a lot of folks um, actively pursuing that project management, data analytics, and um, UX design certifications. And those have been uh, something that's like a very strong trend in the marketplace. I mean, when you think, especially it, it's interesting because there's a lot of overlap, as I mentioned before, with some of these where people who, who do like project management can get, generally get a good scope of uh, UX design, et cetera. Um, it, it's all connected in unique ways. So it, once you kind of like learn a little bit about each of them, it, it really helps you to understand the broad scope of like where that role stands in the organization and then those hand up going forward. Um, I did see a question come through about uh, finding a mentor for UX design. Um, it's a great question. I would uh, encourage people to leverage if you're not if you're within an organization currently that has a department like that. Um, definitely reach out to people in that department, learn more about their day to day, and then kind of see if they can be a mentor for you, so to speak. There, but if not, if and you're kind of you know, between jobs currently, I encourage folks to utilize LinkedIn, other job boards. Um, and then also utilize, you can Google online resources for whatever career field that you may want to pursue. And there are like mentorship groups in um, like even Facebook has, has some, for example, um, where you can kind of 
collaborate with others, get a good sense for where people are in their career journey. And then you can reach out to people in an isolated sense and say, hey, I see that you're much more senior to me. What's what's your career path look like? How can I kind of approach that space? And, um, you know, how can I upskill myself to get to to where you are currently? It's I, I know this isn't, you know, very um, self-explanatory, but the Internet is an incredible resource. Mm-hmm. The and that number of communities that I have seen that are specific towards different job titles or different industries is astounding. Even Reddit nowadays, I found like a oh, yeah. Reddit um, mm-hmm. UX where people were posting their portfolios and then getting feedback from other members like in real time was super helpful and people sharing tips for others that were also looking to interview within UX. So absolutely incredible. The number of people out there that are willing to share. Um, And then the same goes towards you. So as you go on your upskilling journey and you start learning more about your industry, paying it forward towards these communities as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great catch. And uh, more so to that point, yeah, being, you know, in the age that we live in currently, leveraging the internet to the fullest extent that you can is very important, more important now than ever than in today's job markets. Um, There's so many resources online for all, for the you know whole gamut of career fields. So I encourage folks to take time to see communities where that, that are in line with their career goals, where they can kind of, uh, one, you know, vent frustrations to people who understand your struggles, but two, um, seek that mentorship, seek that um, collaboration to kind of continue and uh, develop yourself. Sure. I saw another great question come in. Um, what types of jobs are best for the Salesforce administrator certificate? Um, So for those of you, yeah, who might not be familiar, um, there is a Salesforce administration certificate on the Career Circle website if you're interested in learning more. Um, But definitely would encourage people not just to look at Salesforce administrator, but also other related job types that might use Salesforce. Um, These are probably going to sound familiar to Ethan, but like systems administrator, uh, database administration, uh, CRM administration, um, help me with some others, Ethan. Um, Even outside of that. So thinking outside of the traditional wheelhouse of like just strictly administration, um, a lot of Salesforce administrators go on to be successful business analysts because a lot of Salesforce administration is examining the, the CRM software and seeing how it can best serve your organization, um, which is 90% of a business analyst job, so to speak. They, they kind of zoom out for perspective and get an idea of what the business is doing well, where they can improve, and then what changes they can make to kind of uh, improve overall efficacy. So. Um, there, there's a lot you can do with the Salesforce admin cert. I, all the job titles that Amanda mentioned are a great start, especially if you're, you're looking to stay just more strictly within the technical piece and just kind of touching more of the, um, the systems directly and less like overall analysis of a business model. But um, yeah, you can look at um, systems analysts, CRM analysts. Uh, the, the, the big difference between the job title, obviously, is like an analyst will take kind of zoom out and get full scope of where um, the organization wants to be versus where it is. And then an administrator will kind of do the technical side of that and make make those changes as they come through. So um, you you get a lot of skill set out of that. You get a lot of new skills out of that certification um, during the curriculum for any upskilling uh, <clears throat> certification. I recommend folks take some time to zoom out and see where the, one job titles that align to um, what other skills they're picking up outside of the strict technical skills that are within that curriculum. Very true. But because yeah. a lot. And a lot of times, Ethan and I see this, that, um, you know, try not to get stuck too much on the job title, just because that'll differ so much by company that sometimes you have to look at like the skills and qualifications first to see like what they're really getting at. So just because you are looking, you have a project management certificate, it doesn't mean that you're just applying to roles as a project manager or project coordinator. Um, It could also be within operations. It could be a coordinator role within marketing or within human resources. So lots Mm -hmm. of really great ways to take transferable skills that you might have learned with your upskilling opportunity and then apply it to other areas just like Ethan is taking his computer science training and applying it towards recruiting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, things are uh, very broad now in the, in the, in the current workforce and a lot of the upskilling curriculums that are readily available for folks. Um, they, they cover a wide gamut of soft and hard skills, hard skills being like technical skills. So the soft skills you can apply to basically any career path, but those technical skills are kind of what'll make you stand out. So specifically, uh, and and I, again, this kind of circles back to that uh, Salesforce admin piece as well. I encourage people to be a little introspective, figure out what they really want to work with. And if that, you know, it is specifically that technology, great. But if not, apply those soft skills and see how they apply to um, job titles strict, outside of strictly what you may be pursuing. 
for sure. And value those soft skills as well, because yeah, not absolutely. everyone realizes how hard it is to establish some of those skills. Yeah, um, very important. Yeah. But great question. Thank you guys. Um, definitely keep them coming as we're going. Um, something else um, wanted to touch on as well with upskilling um, as we were talking about um, community is the importance of getting uh, support from others in your life. So not just, you know, the broader community, but also friends and family and helping, you know, get the tips that you can to set up a nice study schedule for yourself that can help you stay on track um, and just getting support at the end of every day to remind yourself why it is that you're upskilling in the first place. Mm -hmm. I saw a great question come in. Actually, <clears throat> this is a really, really great question. What jobs can you pursue with a project management certification for junior entry level? And do you know much about Scrum Master and Agile? I I'm assuming that that more so is referring to um, do, do we know like what that looks like in the workforce? But um, as far as what jobs you can pursue, so to uh, Amanda touched on this briefly earlier, but you can also pursue things like project coordinator level roles or um, kind of like administrator roles. So if you if you kind of zoom out and look at the, the responsibilities of a project manager on the whole, a lot of it is just uh, basically ensuring that a business can meet its deliverables. And so there are multiple stages of that. The way, the way that you'll kind of want to approach that position in getting in the entry level space is addressing one of those multiple stages of how they reach that deliverable and then kind of um, using that as a segue into the, the full scope project management. So project coordinator roles, uh, marketing coordinator, software coordinator, things like that. Um, and again, even analyst roles to some extent do a similar functionality. So um, transitioning from that to the Scrum Master and Agile piece, uh, they are very relevant certifications for the project management space in the software field. So if you're looking to go into like long term, you want to look at um, project management uh, for a software company or a tech company that's basically implementing some kind of software into it. I shouldn't say tech company because everyone uses tech these days, but um, just a company in general that's looking to implement new uh, technologies into the way that they operate. Um, a scrum master will essentially uh, dictate the software development lifecycle, uh, give the organization a general scope for where they want to be with an XYZ timeline, and then um, kind of develop where we want to be um, and make sprints to uh, reach that end goal. Um, the Agile is a, you know, a methodology. There's, there's several different methodologies in the software space, but Agile's one that's super prevalent right now. Um, I encourage folks, if you are interested in that software space, definitely learn more about Scrum, Agile, and um, kind of bu build your skill set around that because they're they are incredibly prevalent. I don't see them going anywhere anytime soon. And um, it's kind of been that way for a while now, being honest with you. <laughs> and Ethan, I know you have more familiarity. I've just started to like dip my toe into the world of Agile and Scrum. And already I start to see other softwares um, that are very re uh, relevant to this, like um, Azure DevOps is something that I was just introduced to, um, seeing like the structures that people are using. Every, of course, every company is going to use their own software system, but even having some familiarity with this would be really helpful if you're looking to apply for companies that are going to end up using those types of systems. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Take some time to, uh, I, again, we, we've said this a couple of times now, but take some time to familiarize yourself with the job posting, what technologies they're using, and then um, actively engage with resources that will help bolster your, your knowledge around those. Um, saw another question, folks who have certified uh, in data analytics to create a portfolio online. Um, it Generally, there is a, a space in, in a curriculum for upskilling. I don't have those resources readily available. What I can do is learn a little bit more, uh, not learn a little bit more, I'll, I'll partner with some of my resources after this meeting and we can kind of throw it up in, uh, on the career circle pages just where uh, as a resource for folks to reference in the future where you can go to create a data analytics portfolio. But uh, GitHub, I would say traditionally is where a lot of people in the data analytics software space will make um, portfolios and you can usually just include that as a brief link at the top of your resume. That, that's one that I see used the most. Let's see another question um, asking a little bit more about um, Career Circle and leveraging the Career Circle platform. Um, so, definitely, if you're looking to upskill, if you visit um, careercircle.com, we do have our courses tab, which goes a little bit more in depth about some of the different certificates that we're talking about if you're considering that. 
Um, Career Circle, also a great place as you're earning certifications and you are ready to apply for jobs. Um, it's absolutely free to create an account or profile. And there is a special section of your profile where you can upload um, your certifications and then your skills um, as well. So pulling out each of those skills that you got in those certificates and then clearly outlining them on your Career Circle profile. So that way, as employers are looking for people with these certifications, you're very easy to identify on the platform. Yep, absolutely. And then as far as far as the mission piece goes, so a lot of companies right now in the space um, are looking for just trying to match folks with jobs, so to speak. We kind of look at the job market a little more holistically in the sense of being a workforce development platform where we want to match you with the, the resources to upskill, help you get to where you want to be long term. And then from there, help you get your resume in tip top shape, get you ready for your interview, all that good stuff and match you to an opportunity that works best for you. Um, a large part of our mission, so to speak, is um, addressing that, that growing uh, skill gap in the workforce and helping to uh, match folks with any technology resources that can best uh, that, can, that can best serve them in, that, in their journey. Um, we offer scholarships for upskilling. Um, and then beyond that, we also partner with a wide a litany of organizations that um, kind of help to get folks to market quickly after they complete their upskilling curriculum. And uh, very well said, Ethan. And to your point, um, a lot of the talent that is on the Career Circle platform are also members who are recently upskilled or in the process of upskilling. So the recruitment team and the um, hiring managers are very well versed in the skills that are covered in a lot of the certificates that we're mentioning. Um, so they do have familiarity to be able to assist with tips for helping to make that career transition or just helping to outline your career path as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all the follow up from the person who asked the, the uh, question about Scrum. Um, yeah, definitely encourage you to uh, do some research on it, learn a little bit about it, and then learn a little bit more about, um, uh, you'll want to learn a little bit more about the, the comparative um, methodologies. And then from there, you can also get a better understanding of why each methodology works in XYZ organization. So like Agile is one, Waterfall is one. There's a lot of different software development methodologies or business methodologies. Um, if, you pre if you research one, get familiar with one, I encourage you to just touch base on others. That way you have like a general broad scope of familiarity with what's in the space surrounding what you're targeting. And I saw a comment about um, getting in touch with Career Circle to get some of these um, assistance. So definitely, if you have not already, um, you can visit careercircle.com to set up a profile. And then we do have a chat feature on the website, as well as a contact us at the bottom where you can submit um, a ticket or use the chat feature to request to speak with a member of the recruitment team, as well as when you first get signed up on Career Circle, you do get an email with a link to be able to contact that team directly. Um, it's a resource meeting that's conducted just to identify what it is that you're specifically looking for assistance for. So if you're looking for assistance with your resume, of course, you can share that information there if you're looking for some tips. Um, Ethan and his wonderful team are there to be able to assist with that process as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I did notice somebody asking a, a question about a spot to upload a video on the Career Circle profile. We do offer the opportunity for folks to kind of represent who they are beyond their resume. Uh, that's another large part part of the work that we're trying to do. Um, yeah, it's a, just a brief 10 second intro video. Tell people a little bit about what you've done, the upskilling that you've completed, and then what kind of career goals you're targeting in the future for the hiring managers on our platform to engage with. Um, a lot of hiring managers specifically that I've worked with uh, really, really appreciate that because it's kind of like a glimpse into the person that they may be working with in the future. Yeah, it's also a chance to put a face and a voice to your re behind your resume. So yeah. you're at Career Circle, we say a lot like you're more than just your resume. And so this is a way for you to give a chance to introduce yourself and to really show a little bit of personality in the process, which sometimes gets lost um, when you're uh, you know, doing a lot of applications online. But great questions from everyone. I feel like we gave the audience quite a bit of homework, Ethan. <laughs> so um, yeah, for sure. So we're you know just encouraging everyone to go out there, um, do some research. Definitely utilize not just the Career Circle website, but also you know industry professionals that you might be familiar with. 
um, and others who have some, some familiarity with your interest doing research using your job postings, your job qualifications to determine what sorts of skills or upskilling certificates might best be able to help. And then once you get into your upskilling journey, really putting your best foot forward and fully going for it and just letting, you know, kind of using your passion and your long-term career goal to get you through that journey. And then at the end, uh, Career Circle, we're still going to be right here to help you out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's that's what we're excited for is, is the, the, the part to help you out. <laughs> regardless. <laughs> for sure. The best part at the end of the day, seeing somebody that just earned their certificate after, mm-hmm. you know, spending 20 plus hours every single week for the past few months working on it, it's the best feeling in the world. Yep, absolutely. All right. I think we're just about wrapping up for questions. I don't know, Ethan, if you see anything else that I might have missed. Um, yeah, I I, it, I did see somebody asking about a career circle posting that we have on, currently um, on our job board. Um, I encourage people to apply to them. Um, and if you notice that it's somebody that you would be able if you feel like it's something that you'd be able or like extra qualified for so to speak i guess is like a, the crude way of saying <laughs> um feel free to use the chat bot and then um they can schedule uh one-on-one with the recruiting team directly and we'll kind of try to put some emphasis on that and try to get you matched with the, the recruiter responsible for that a little bit quicker for sure so um like i said ethan and i gave quite a bit of homework in terms of research but also utilizing the chat feature of the career circle website to get in touch with us after so that we can help you get connected with the resources that you're looking for on the website so definitely be sure to check out career circle after today and if there are any lingering questions that we might have missed please feel free to leave them in the chat below um ethan and i will be checking it out a little bit later in the day to make sure that we wrap up any remaining questions absolutely And with that, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, We are going to be doing these monthly. um, So definitely stay tuned to your email, to social media communications. Um, We're going to try to do, like I said, try to bring these back monthly. So if there's anything that you would like us to talk about as well, please feel free to leave any ideas or suggestions in the chat. And if you missed any point of this recording, you can always go to check out our YouTube page or our LinkedIn to see the recording of this session afterwards. So thank you guys very much. We'll see you all on social media. Don't forget to check out our YouTube, our Facebook, our LinkedIn profile, our Twitter, um, and we'll see you guys next month. Oh, oh, shout out to our Instagram as well. Lots of fun stuff going up there. Quick, fun little skits for you guys. (laughs) Very true. Thank you guys so much. (laughs) See you later.